Should I wear these? No, I look like an alien. I belong, I belong to you. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Connor, if you are new here. And I make lots of videos about running, fitness, life, bit of beauty, just anything that I really quite enjoy. This is a very exciting vlog. I'm actually very proud of this video. It was so much fun for me to film and I really like how it's kind of come together. So if you didn't know, I'm currently training for a half marathon that will be on the 1st of July on the Gold Coast. I am about to enter week four four of my training so I've got about a little less than 10 weeks left I think and just a bit of background if you weren't aware but I'm sure most of you are I've never been really good at running I started at the end of last year and I've kind of gotten a little bit better and I'm kind of obsessed at the moment and I'm just really into it and it's my favorite thing ever one thing that I wanted to make sure that I'm doing with my training is still incorporating the gym because that's really important to me and it's really beneficial to have both strength training and running so it is a lot but I really want to challenge myself and I do have a goal I'm kind of like locked in for this period of time it's pretty hard like I'm not gonna lie sorry if you can hear the birds by the way I also just want to say that my weeks often look very very different I try to have set days for when I go to the gym or when I run but sometimes they just have to get switched around a little bit so what my ideal schedule kind of looks like at the moment is working out in the gym three days a week we have a lower body session an upper body session and a full body sometimes it might be a little bit less and that's okay and I am also aiming to run four days a week again I know it's a lot but it's just I want to be as prepared as possible I can be for this half marathon and I've already noticed huge improvements so essentially I'm working out six days a week and I have one rest day last week was definitely a little bit jumbled though because I did my long run technically yesterday which is Monday which was meant to be on Sunday but we're back on track now so yeah I just kind of fit it in where I can but I always make sure that I do have one rest day because rest is very very important and if I feel like I need an extra rest day I will take it so yeah if you want to see what my life looks like definitely follow me on Instagram because I post a lot of running content on there and on my TikTok as well and if you want to see what a week training for a half marathon in my life looks like keep on watching Good morning. It's actually Wednesday the following week because I didn't actually film my Monday workout last week, but I've forgotten my freaking headphones. I left them at my boyfriend's house. I don't think I've ever done a workout with no headphones like solo, but I'm like, I need to get this done because I need to get this filmed because I want this video up today. I can do this. We can do a workout with no headphones, Connor. It is fine. So yeah, this is gonna be my glute focus workout. Let's go. Alrighty, let's jump straight into this glute workout. Glutes is definitely my favorite to train. And I'm finding, honestly, that I feel a lot stronger in the gym, which is interesting through the introduction of running. Don't know if it's placebo or what, but I'm just starting out with some cast glute bridges. These have a shorter range of motion than hip thrusts. I don't ever really go like too crazy heavy with these just because I prefer to like focus on my form, go slower rather than going too heavy because I find that I'll just feel it in my back too much or I just won't do the movement correctly like I'd rather prioritize form than try and go super heavy so I did four sets of about 10 reps and I think I did eight reps of 90 here just really trying to squeeze at the top and it hurts <laughs> And then moving on to Bulgarians. These I feel significantly stronger in. I'm using 12 and a half here. I definitely could have gone up to 15 or done more reps, but I did four sets of eight. I love doing these on a barbell with a little um, barbell pad. It is honestly life-changing. Definitely try it. You want to just imagine that you're kind of going up and down, kind of on an angle like an escalator and really push through your heel. Then we are moving on to RDLs. I have a love-hate relationship with these because I really don't want to feel it in my back. That is like the objective of every glute movement, I swear. So making sure that my glutes are turned on and I'm not using my back muscles. Again, I think I did three sets of like, 10 here. And then moving on to the last exercise, I did some cable step ups. This is a new exercise for me. It's kind of hard to explain and it looks very like I'm not doing much, but what you want to do is kind of lean forward slightly and really push up slowly from your working legs, the leg that's on the bench and really control the movement going down. It works your glutes so much and I much prefer this to hyper extensions and just keeping everything under tension. You don't need to go super heavy. I'm literally using like five kilos um, and that is my glute workout. All right, so it is the night before I start my training. I technically was meant to do 
my run today because I take Monday as a rest day off of running. I just didn't get to it, so I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm quite like lenient when it comes to what days I'm doing my running, but as we get more and more into training, I need to kind of make sure I'm placing these runs strategically, especially when it comes to long runs because you wanna make sure that you're running on fresh legs. It's currently 7.47. I'm about to go to bed, kind of wind down for the evening. I'm going to do some reading. This is the second book that I've started reading. I typically go to bed fairly early. I really want to get my run done quite early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning we have a 8k easy run. Easy runs are probably one of my favorites because they're easy. <laughs> I won't ramble on too much more because I'll talk about it tomorrow when I'm running, but I have laid out what I'm going to wear. I should be getting in some new running shoes tomorrow. I'm so excited, but I think that is what I'm gonna wear. I've tried to match the socks to the top. Depending on if it's like chilly or not, I might wear a long sleeve, but that's gonna be the fit. Yesterday I did train glutes, which is really, really good. Good to be back in the gym and I felt quite strong, which was nice. Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed, wind down for the evening. I will see you tomorrow morning, fingers crossed, fairly early. If it's raining, it might be a different story. Easy run. I need to remind myself that because I I'm feeling a bit I don't know. I tell you, even though I've run heaps of times, I still get a bit nervous. Because running scares me. I find that this range off the top of my head I think it's the sweat because gym track have so many. I get these in a medium because they definitely run a bit smaller. I've also matched my socks to the sports bra. My garment also is, I believe it is, it's a Forerunner 945. I still have the box and I really like it. Like, it is pretty cool. Boom, shaka laka. My shoes. Okay, just finished. That was an hour of running. Oh my God, my hair. <laughs> I did have to stop <sighs> because I had to do a poo, but that felt really hard. I think it's because I trained legs on Monday and I'm still quite sore, but I know it's because I've been inconsistent with the gym. So my doms are like more intense than they usually are. I need to make sure I'm on top of that. But yeah, 8K, easy run. It felt easy in terms of my heart rate, but my legs felt a bit, Oh, how you going? That was such a weird run and now it's raining. It rained like right at the start. 
Ugh. <laughs> Got it done. Blue skies now. about that run you can't sit in my lap you're too big so that oh no. that just dented the wall ah uh, no don't nibble on the calendar it was okay i know why it felt hard it's because i'm still very sore from the gym on monday and it's now wednesday and half the time the delayed onset muscle soreness is worse the day after the day after so like two days after the workout especially since i haven't really trained i haven't really trained glutes in a while so that is why so i definitely should do some stretching after this but i'm feeling really good now feeling pretty energized that was probably a harder feeling easy run just mainly because of the fatigue in my legs but i was kind of aiming to go no faster than seven minutes 30 per kilometer which is very slow people love to hate on me for how slow my time is i know it's slow but it's it's an easy run and it's my easy run and the way you get better is by going slow. If you are finding your easy runs to be difficult or you feel like your heart rate's too high, it's not easy. You're, you're doing more of like a threshold run, so you need to really like dial it back and slow down. If I pop my splits on the screen, you can kind of see I pretty much stuck to between like 7.30 and 7.40-ish a kilometre. A couple of times I went a bit fast. Kilometre five is when I went to the toilet, so I don't know why that's a 6.15 because I feel like I wouldn't have run... I did pause my watch, but I didn't think I... I don't know what happened there. That was definitely a faster easy run for me. My easy runs in theory should be getting a bit faster, but they should still feel easy the same. I've also stuffed up my runner app and I don't know how to fix it. I've like messaged the support to try and like get it back because I can't view my week. So the first run done, I might do an upper body session today with the home gym or tomorrow. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna get into some work. I did actually just have a call with my functional nutritionist. It was super interesting all about my gut and what my poo said. And I will see you either at the next run or a workout. Okay, for this upper body session, I actually was vlogging and like talking to the camera, but in typical Connor fashion, it was filming in slow motion. So I had to do a voiceover. Today we are doing an upper body session and I tend to do an upper body session on a day that I run as well. So that will leave me with a rest day. Usually on a day that I do like an easy run or a tempo run, just like wherever I want to do it. So enjoy. Okay, so starting off with this upper body workout. So I'm starting off with some barbell rows. I think I did about 12 here just to warm up. I'm not exactly sure what the weight is because I don't know how heavy that bar is, but I've just got some, oh, if I had to guess, I think it's 10 kilos. And then I just kind of do like three sets of about 12, making sure to really like hinge those elbows back. I don't know if hinge is the right word, but you want to be bringing them to your hips rather than like going up and down. Um, similar to like a single barbell row, like you want to go swooping back. Anyway, moving on to some shoulder press. I'm doing eight kilos here. I've always found my shoulder strength to not be my best uh, thing. So just starting off with some eights, I think I did 10 to 12 reps here, just really trying to control the movement. Watching back this footage, I feel like one of my arms... I don't know if that's my left arm, like, doesn't actually go up all the way, which is so random. That's why you should film yourself, so you can see where you can correct your form. And then I foolishly tried to do the 12 and a half because we didn't have any 10s. And I think I get, like, four reps. I don't even know. It was so hard. The difference between 10 and 12 is wild. Then I moved on to some single dumbbell rows. I love these, especially for your back, making sure to really like, again, bring that elbow back towards your hip. Great for the back. I don't know all the terminology because I am not a PT, but I love these. I think I did uh, 12 and I believe I'm using the 12 and a half here. So. This whole time I've been filming in slow motion. <sighs> if I could take that button away, I would. The button that changes like the mode of filming is like right next to the filming button. And you can't even tell when it's um, when it's on the slow motion because it's, it's not on the screen. Oh, that's so annoying. Honestly, would not be one of my videos without some slow motion in there. Oh, I need to like remove that button. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little like three superset type of 
vibe, we're gonna do some lateral raises into hammer curls into tricep extension. That was cool. No, tricep backwards one, you know, you'll see. There is absolutely no way I could work out in here in summer. Moving on to those lateral raises, you can really see my back muscles working here. I try my best to not swing. I think I'm using fives here. Normally at the gym, I would use four, um, but you just want to really control that movement. And then I superseded that with some hammer curls. I think I did 10 because these things are so hard. Again, superseded that with some tricep. I don't know if what's the name of the tricep extensions, tricep something something i think i did again 10 to 12 and then we repeat that three times how do people do this <laughs> all right i think that'll conclude my upper body workout wasn't the most extensive actually stop workout Four to three minutes. I'll definitely have a bigger workout when I do my full body um, later in the week. I always have trouble like thinking if I didn't spend, you know, an hour and a half in the gym, then I didn't have a good workout, which is definitely not the case. And I need to get out of my head. I definitely think like running at the moment is my focus. So I think it's okay for the gym to kind of take a back seat, but I'm still doing it. I'm the type of person that I'll become consumed by something at the moment it's running that's like all i will focus on which is, it can be a good thing but not always but i'm glad i got that done because i am so unmotivated to work out in the garage but i thought that was a good little kind of almost dumbbell only workout i probably could have done like one more thing but i got other stuff to do today good afternoon it is 4 40 p.m and it is time to do my tempo run this will be run number two for the week i definitely space out my runs a bit more than i have this week because i'm essentially running three days in a row <laughs> because I do my long runs usually on Sunday I kind of want to have a rest day before so I'm gonna do my other run tomorrow this is the fit I've got this purple like it's like a it's like a gray purple rouged Gymshark bra um I've also got <laughs> I've got on these shorts which are I think they're called the speed shorts i put on a plain pair of the black um it's like their yoga material on underneath these ones just have like built-in like underwear but i can't run with like my thighs exposed i've tried that like chafing stick that i got didn't really work for me i don't know if you guys have any recommendations for like chafing cream or chafing balm because i'd love to run in like flowy shorts but i just my thighs just chafe too much so we're mocking the like shorts under shorts look and then these are my new running shoes are they not so sick? They are so comfy. They are called the Super Blast. They're pretty freaking fancy. So gonna give those a go today. Hopefully they agree with my feet. I feel a bit more alive actually just talking to you guys. So yeah, yesterday we had easy run. Today we have a tempo run. So tempo kind of self-explanatory. You're basically not running at the same speed for the whole run. Oh, it's seven kilometers. Oh, I thought it was eight, but it's only seven kilometers. I'm kind of excited for that. Okay. I would have never ever fathomed running 7K. And now I'm like, oh yeah, it's only 7K as opposed to eight because one kilometer makes such a difference. The first two Ks, we're going to do 725 pace. The next two Ks are at 705. The next two Ks are at 655. And then the last K is at 645. I'll probably go a little bit faster than that just because it's actually so hard to run slower if you're feeling good but it is also very important to try and like ease myself into going faster not just being like oh i can go fast because i feel fine like no connor and then tomorrow we've got intervals should i wear these <laughs> no i look like an alien i wore these on my run the other day yeah no <laughs> i kind of want to get a pair of like running sunnies i feel like that would be cool but i don't think i can take myself seriously at this point i don't know whether to put a top on or not Kind of like the white and black vibes. Love that. Oh, the shoes look so cool. Am I running yet? <laughs> All right. Just started raining a little bit. Nice. My shoes freaking glow in the dark. That is so cool. Okay, 
thoughts on that run it was good I think obviously I've never run in these shoes before so it's definitely an adjustment it definitely feels different I think they feel good I think I'm trying to like overthink and I'm like oh is my ankle hurting in a weird way is this like not quite right because my other shoes weren't for me but I think they're okay my workout ended at five kilometers I don't know if it's because I didn't like update the workouts on my watch but I kind of just kept going at like 6.45 and then I just kind of sent it in the last kilometre so I haven't like properly sat down and looked at the splits but felt pretty good my heart rate felt um I definitely feel like I'm getting faster and my heart rate is staying lower I'm not like necessarily super fast but I think the difference in terms of how I feel when I run is like huge it's going to be very interesting to see like how much my fitness does change over these next 10 weeks because I've never trained at this intensity for anything really in my life and that's when I did like gymnastics as a kid yeah probably probably when I did gymnastics is when I was training like the most I was in the gym like four times a week for like six hours at a time but I was also 11 years old so this is probably the most intense training that I've ever done since then so I'm very curious to see like what's gonna happen it's Friday and we have another run. We have another run. Super late in the morning. It's almost 10 a.m. And I'm kind of like semi-concerned that I shouldn't actually go for a run because actually it's pretty overcast. I might be fine. But I kind of want to get my run done in the morning because I don't think I'm going to want to do it tonight. I'm also being very daring by wearing colored bottoms. I am a sweaty monster. I like running in these. These are the sweat shorts because they don't ride up. And it's kind of like funny, once I start to sweat, it's almost like they stick to my sweat and they just don't move. Don't know if that's gross or not, but as someone who finds that lots of shorts tend to ride up on me, I find that these are pretty good. Any shorter than this though, I don't like to wear just because I get like chafing. This is a very supportive Gymshark bra as well. I can't think of the name of this, but I'll have it on the screen. This one has like the molded cups like built in just for a lot more support and the shoes and the socks low-key match i've literally waited so long that i'm getting hungry again so i'm definitely gonna need a snack before i go oh no the sun is coming out do i just wait no can i just do it just get it done and then tomorrow's a rest day and then we have our long run on sunday these are like puffed lotus seeds and they are peri peri flavor they're so good <laughs> they're spicy though this week is definitely significantly f more mileage than last week like last week the total distance is 26 kilometers this week it's 39 kilometers which is good we need those miles or kilometers so we have 400 meter repeats two and a half k warm-up at conversational pace and then we have 60 seconds walking rest and then we've got five reps of 400 meters at six minute pace and then 60 seconds walking rest, and then one and a half kilometer cool down. It's not that bad. I think I just see 8K and I think, oh my God. I need to hype myself up. We'll see how the shoes go again today. I definitely won't wear these all the time because they're more of a race shoe. That's right. I don't look like I've pushed my pants. I'm gonna get back. I'm on my cool down now. That was, that was hard. <laughs> I didn't realize the, five by 400 i thought i had to do that once i had to do it twice so i was like got two more left one more left oh, okay and i was like expecting the one and a half cool down and then it was like 400 meters at six minute pace and i was like what the heck my watch is like glitching so i paused it quickly looked at the app and i saw a little two times and I was like oh my god I have to do that again and I think I just wasn't like mentally prepared for it like it probably would have been okay otherwise so I did essentially 10 by 400 with a two minute rest in between each five <laughs> and that was hard all right I'm showered and I am making my post run meal the thing about running later in the morning is 
you obviously start your day later so you're kind of working more into the evening which is totally fine because I make my own hours and you do get to sleep in a little bit and just like take it a bit slower however running like later in the morning even as it is getting cooler it's just so damn hot you're gonna run you just gotta do it a little bit earlier unfortunately at, at this time when the weather is like this I'm just cooking up my my mints that was probably the hardest one that I've ever done but I think if I was mentally prepared for the repeat of the five by four hundreds I think I would have been a lot better I just genuinely had no idea um, and when it came I was like oh my god I have to do that again but it's good because these are the sessions that like not every session is going to be easy peasy and you're going to be feeling great like you're going to have to push sometime <laughs> and get that heart rate up there but not every run is an easy run so but yeah that was tough and now I need to mentally prepare myself to do a 16 kilometer on Sunday. And fingers crossed, I'm getting like those little like soft water bottles that you stick in a running vest today. And I really wanna try and make like a homemade electrolyte drink because a couple of you have commented recommending her video. Her name's Natasha Ocean, but I don't think it's pronounced Ocean. She is a machine. Her content is so enjoyable. She is like peak athlete. She has so much like, science backed information that she brings to the internet. And she makes this electrolyte drink that's like maple syrup, lime, salt and water. And I really wanna give that a go because I feel like that's gonna be a little bit easier on my stomach than anything too artificial. But I really need to test a bunch of things like figure out if certain gels do work for me, what snacks I like to take, learning experience. Hello my friends, I'm just jumping in to let you know that this video is sponsored by Gymshark. I think Gymshark's definitely my preference when it comes to doing my running because they're very tailored towards like actually working out. Because you know how some activewear brands are definitely more like athleisure, they're not necessarily practical for doing like actual intense workouts. Whereas Gymshark, like I know, it's it's like an old faithful, like, we're gonna be good. In this video I'm wearing a bunch of the new pieces that have just launched and I'm gonna quickly run through some of them now. When it comes to running, I like to be comfortable and practical as well and then when it comes to the gym I like to be a little bit more uh, fashionable if you could even say that there are just certain things you cannot wear with running like the minimal sports bras you, I can't wear that running but for my upper body day heck yeah that is pretty much the only thing I'm wearing first up we've got some new launches in the vital seamless collection because it's getting a lot cooler in the mornings like this morning was freezing I have been wearing long sleeves on my run and I've been really enjoying them I'm finding that I'm not getting too hot at all which is good because I tend to overheat really easily these are perfect for like my early morning runs I get them in a size small I don't want them to be like too crazy tight on my arms they go over your hands and then we also have the green which I love it's a very like Christmas green I love those and then we also have the new battle seamless sports bras which mine is in the wash I'm filming this like after the week is completed I wore it this morning on my long run and she was great the website says it has light support but I feel like I was pretty good again I don't need like a whole heap of support but Gymshark also have like the high support bras which are very very good I wore those on my was it my interval day I'm not sure. And then we have the same thing in the Vital Seamless shorts. Vital Seamless shorts are just a staple. They always look so good, really nice and comfy. I got these in a size small. I love pairing bright colors with white too. So like on my upper body day, I paired the green with the white minimal sports bra. And then of course we have the full length. I haven't worn these yet, but I wore the pink on my full body day and I love. I haven't worn like Vital Seamless long leggings in so long. I haven't really worn full length leggings in ages because it's just been too hot. Another fave of mine is sweat, particularly when it comes to running. When I feel like I want to run in like a short short, I gravitate towards sweat because I find that these don't ride up on me. I mentioned in the video how I feel like when I start to sweat, these almost like stick to the sweat and just don't move, which is very fitting because they are called sweat I have come up with a bunch of new colors like this purple she is so stunning i do love these for running as well because i find the support is really nice i get these in a medium i would say if you're in between sizes honestly i think sizing up is probably the best bet i do find these to be quite fitting and I love that it doesn't really have any built-in like wire. Like it's very, almost like a bralette. It's so comfy. Other bits that I've been loving for running. I really like this tank top to run in. I'm typically always like a sports bra and shorts girl. But sometimes if I'm wearing like a running vest or if I just want a little bit more coverage. This is like super, super thin, lightweight. It's called the GFX Slim Tank. And it just says... Gymshark on the back. They have it in a hot pink and I really want to get the hot pink. And they also have these which are super cool. They're like a faded hoodie that just have like the old school like Gymshark on the front. We've got it in a dark green and also a dark 
grey. It's a little bit more lightweight than the, I think it's called the Rest Day Joggers, if you know what these feel like. Like, they're very, very heavy. These are a lot more lightweight. These are in a size large. Like a nice oversized with some pockets. And then I also got a new colour in the Minimal Sports Bra. Again, she is in the wash. But I wore that on my full body day with the pink leggings. If I want to have more support with the Minimal Sports Bras, I leave those extra straps on. And then if you want more back showing, take them off. But you will get less support, obviously. And then another classic. I have this bra in so many colours. It is the Rouged Training Bra. It's like in a grey, just like classic I can wear it to run in, go to the gym in, it's great. I will try and list all of my different gym fits that I wear in the video down below. And Gymshark have discount codes now, which is so exciting because they didn't have them for so long. But you can use the code Connor and that will save you some money off of Gymshark. I will leave my affiliate link down below if you want to shop. And thank you so much to Gymshark for sponsoring this video. I don't know if you can hear the kookaburras in the background, but I apologize. <laughs> Jumping into this full body workout, I'm first doing some little hip thrusts just to warm up the glutes. I feel like I really need to work on warming up when it comes to the gym, just in general, actually. So I'm trying to do some like dynamic stretches where I'm like moving and then we are starting off with some squats. I'm not going crazy heavy here. I'm not trying to go like super deep or anything just because I'm just trying to maintain my strength. I'm not trying to go for any PRs at this stage in my life. Um, just because I don't want to jeopardize my running. So I did about four sets of 70 kilos, I think, for about six to eight reps. And then I moved on to Smith Machine lunges. These things hurt. My quads are still sore today. As I'm recording this, it's Monday now. And oh my God, I don't know what it is. I feel like it just... Lunges are really good for running as well. I like to make sure I incorporate these. These ones specifically kind of target my glutes and my quads. And then I moved on to some pull downs. I'm using the attachment that looks like this um, because I find that it really targets the back in the way that I want to. Like you can really see how I'm like contracting. Is that the word? No, decompressing. See, this is why you shouldn't listen to me. I just follow what other people tell me to do. So definitely don't listen to me. And then moving on to some military press. I, like I said, my shoulder strength is not it. This is me literally doing the bar, and I find this very, very difficult. Um, I did end up adding like two and a half kilos on each side, and I barely got like four reps, but I'm just trying to be really controlled with the movements and not jump. Um, so that's why I'm swallowing my ego and just using the bar. Then I moved on to, why am I literally forgetting what the name of every single exercise ever is? Hyperextension. I don't think I'm doing this correct. There's such a fine line with feeling this in your glutes or feeling it in your back. So I don't know. I felt them in my glutes. So yeah, let me know. And then I finished off with some quick abs. Before this, I did do some cable tricep extension, but I didn't film it. Um, and I just did some of these because I was... <laughs> I was definitely ready to finish. so cold. I feel like I can't even talk right now. Sunrise looks so nice. Almost 6am. I haven't done a poo though and I think it's because I'm nervous which is bad because on the day I'm definitely going to be nervous. So I think what I'm going to do is like run around me where I live so if it comes on early will be all right if it doesn't there's like one place that i know that has a toilet but it doesn't open until seven so far out it's cold but like bottles of water on me because i have them in the fridge oh all right let's let's do this thing i'm so cold <laughs> all right i'm back i'm so sorry i didn't vlog a whole heap the morning i think i was just i was really nervous 
Huh, I've been back for probably like 15 minutes now. And I've just been decompressing, coming back to life because, whoa, that was so hard. <sighs> the first like 10K felt pretty good. I was kind of hurting like just before 10K. I feel like my legs just aren't at the point where I can like comfortably do 10K and it feel like a breeze. I'm gonna, I'll probably chat about it more once I have a shower, but that last three kilometers felt freaking hard. I definitely in the future want to take like some food on my run, maybe try a gel, just because that was almost two hours and I did try and make that maple syrup salt electrolyte drink. I don't think I got the ratios right because it tasted pretty foul, but I did have it and I think it was nice to kind of like have bits of sugar as I was running. Don't remind me just taking my pants off. Even taking like lollies on the run would be a good thing. That last six kilometers was painful. That last kilometer, I felt like I was shuffling, but I managed to like maintain my pace. The first 5K was like super, super, super slow, but I think that's a good thing. <sighs> my, 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 my. But we got it done, 16 kilometers. A half marathon's only like six more. My skin is being a little bit of a biatch. So we are rocking the pimple cream. So the long run, that is by far the longest run I have done ever. My previous longest run was 11 kilometers. That was intense. I did end up having to do a poo mid run. I knew it was gonna happen. It was kind of just before the 40 minute mark. I was in a really good groove, but I could feel it coming on. And I was like, I need to find a toilet. Otherwise I will poo my pants. Luckily I did. And it was fine after that. I do think it was down to nerves. And for the fact that I did get up quite early, like I don't normally get up that early to do a run, but I wanted to eat something and then go. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be like a trial and error trying to figure out exactly how to do my nutrition before the run. That is almost more important than the run itself. Like getting that right. I'm assuming they have like toilets, like porta potties along the race, but I will just be like heartbroken if I have to go to the toilet in the race. I don't know. I just, yeah. Obviously this first half marathon is not going to be like me trying to get a specific time, but it would just be really nice to not need to go to the toilet. The first 5k were super slow. I was really like enjoying the run and I feel like it went by really, really quickly and I didn't like, I don't know. It was just good. That is kind of how I should do my easy run. Runs. My pace was like 743, 810, uh, 754, 741, 801, like super slow. The runner app wanted me to run comfortable pace for the first 5k and then the middle 6k to run at like 705 pace, which 705 pace I can definitely sustain for quite a long time. So then from kind of like that 5k onwards, all of my pacing was under seven minutes, which is cool. Even though the last 5k, it said I could run at a comfortable pace, I kind of just held on to like a six... I would say averaging at like a 6.45 pace. So that was really good. I was really like trying to hold on to keep a good pace. And even though I felt like absolute dog shit in that last like 3K, I managed to hold on to the, the pace fairly well. And the last K was 6 minutes 32. And I felt like I was shuffling. So we completed it in one hour, 53 minutes. Pace was 7.04. I would love to get like a heart rate monitor because that it's a lot more accurate than the watch. But for now, this is fine. And average heart rate was 160. And the thing about that, like my heart rate in most of that run was so fine. Like my cardiovascular fitness is getting so much better because when it came to running before, that was always the thing that I couldn't maintain because I would get too puffed. Whereas when you're running like long runs, you kind of want to go slower or run at a pace that you can maintain and feel kind of comfortable at. It's very interesting because then on the other hand, you're dealing with like intense leg pain and like feeling fatigue in the legs. I swear it's just like a different feeling like when you get to that level of fatigue and you're just like, oh my God, I'm so sore. My body is like, crying it truly is just like mind over matter i think the thing that helps me when it comes to like the long runs i feel like people break down like distances differently like how you break down a marathon or a half marathon when you get to 8k and you think to yourself this is halfway it doesn't feel good like you don't think oh i'm halfway no when i got to 8k i thought oh you're only two kilometers away from 10k and then it's basically just 5k left because the last K doesn't count. That's what I kind of tell myself and that feels better than being like you're halfway. The pros from what I can take from that is eating the wheat bigs beforehand and the banana was good. I liked that. We completed the run, that's a pro. I feel like my pacing was pretty good. Um, I felt good just 
really hurt in those last few Ks. The cons didn't do a pre-run poo. I also had sore legs going into it. Like my quads the night before were so sore. Um, my boyfriend was like massaging my quads because they were really sore. Big mistake. Don't do a long run on sore legs. I kind of almost want to like move my workout days around. I was meant to do this run on Sunday, but Saturday night we had a birthday party. So we got home really, really late. So tired. I was like, I'm not going to get up early and go for this long run. So I just thought I'm just going to do it on Monday. You're not always going to be able to run on the exact days that you want to run. Like sometimes you just have to move things around. But what I'm thinking I might do is do my leg day, do my full body day earlier in the week, and then do my upper body session as the session before my long run just to minimize any type of like fatigue in my legs the doms I think that would have probably been a bit easier if I didn't have that that was a mistake taking no like actual physical food or like a date or something or a gel I don't know if I need a gel there's so much different information about what you should and shouldn't take on a run I think just something a sour worm would have done wonders or or a date like a big juicy date oh it's a learning experience I'm like it's your first long run and like all in all pretty good and like pat on the back that was that's a long that's a long way those are my run thoughts yay she's a runner now and the good thing is now we have a deload week this week so my runs are a little bit pulled back just a smidge <laughs> the total distance we covered last week thinking that today is actually yesterday was 39 kilometers and this week we only have 28 only have 28 but we're getting better that's all that matters we are getting through it Okay, I just wanted to end off this video here. If you've watched the whole thing, oh my god, because this is a long video. I can't remember the last time I uploaded a 40 minute video, but I really, really enjoyed filming this video. I feel like it kind of brought back my passion for vlogging a little bit, like just doing this type of thing. I don't know, I just really, really liked it and I hope you guys found it helpful. And please comment down below if you are training for a half marathon or a marathon or just getting into running, whatever it may be. And thank you so much for all the love on my running journey, but yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, I hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are in the world and I will see you in my next one. Bye.